Due to the monsoons, I've been stuck on my homestead for over two weeks now. On a positive note, I harvested about 2,200 gallons of rainwater yesterday. It's starting to go down the swell, and then it'll overflow and fill the, the pond. If you're new to my channel, it'd be really awesome if you'd subscribe and leave a comment for the algorithm. Outdoor laundry room is faring fairly well in the monsoon. <laughs> oh, that's cold. Oh, 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 here it comes. Whew. All the water from the driveway here will slant down all the way and it'll end up, see it starting to go down the swell and then it'll overflow and fill the, the pond any excess. This isn't the first time I keep putting these beets out in the sun to dry them up better and, uh, and then it rains. Oh no, dang it. My pond is completely full. It rained so hard, it was only half full. Now it's completely full, which concerns me a little bit. I better check the water, the cistern, and see if I need to move some water to keep it from flooding or anything. Of course, the little pond and the swells are all full. After the last rain, it was 24 inches, <laughs> and I can tell it's a lot, it's about half full, maybe, no, it's more than half full. Oh my gosh, okay, let's see, so that's the bottom, I gotta move this a little bit, okay. So it's... 
29 inches. It gained another 5 inches of water. It was at 1,200 before, 1,200 gallons. So it rained more than ever before. Um, this is part of the area I talked about that I needed to still grade out. You can see that's all full. And then over here was the other area I talked about that I just need to grade out. But if you look around the shop, no water. Except for this little spot here. That'll be easy. I can easily float that out. But uh, I was just concerned about keeping, you know, all these areas pretty dry. And they're nice and dry. And uh, that's more than half full and the pond's full. So it shouldn't cause any issues for the pond to overflow. You know, it'll just go out into the, to the plain. And my main concern, I was worried that if this, if this was almost full, I'd have to pump water out because I don't want, I don't want water to get all the way up to the wood and touch the wood and whatnot. No problems in the geothermal here. Some of the heaviest rain I've had. This pond holds about 3,600 gallons, and yesterday it was only half full. I added a small piece of flashing to the roof of my fuel station, and it's harvesting quite a bit of rainwater too. This side of the roof comes down into this container for this rain harvesting system, and this got about 100 gallons in it. And soon I'm going to connect these three together, so this is a thousand gallons roughly, and you know, that'll make it easier to harvest more water over here. This side of the rain harvesting system comes down into this cistern, which is 16 feet long. It holds 3,600 gallons. And yesterday when I checked, I had harvested an additional 500 gallons in there. And that puts me at about 1800 gallons, but I'm going to check it again today because it kept raining. I just checked the cistern and the water level is about the same as it was when I checked it last time. I did have one concern because it's more than half full now and you know the pond just got so full so fast. Of course it has way more uh, harvesting surface, you know, the whole driveway runs into it. But uh, you know, this could get to a point pretty quick, you know, maybe in the next month or less where it would potentially overflow and so I ordered a switch basically that they're built for sump pumps and I'll put it in and once once water touches that it'll automatically activate a bilge pump that I'm going to install and I'll use my new Red Odeo 12 volt battery to power that pump and for now it'll probably be connected just to to send any excess water out into the desert because that's better than flooding my property. And then as soon as I can, I'll have more backup cisterns and whatnot and I can send the water over to another cistern. You might have seen my video where I was running this pump in the pond and I'm gonna order another one of these pumps and I, I have another battery over there and whatever. So eventually I'll get everything worked out, but I plan to have uh, soon enough a solar panel the battery the pump and the sensor over here at the cistern And I might even set one up over on the pond so that you know, it's full now So what happens if it rains really hard tomorrow? Uh, it'd be nice to be able to send that water somewhere else So one it doesn't flood the homestead and two if I have more storage I can send the water over there. Look how happy all the corn and potatoes are These plants just grew up overnight Back here I have an agricultural shed for feed and whatnot, and it harvests rain as well for my geothermal. And this tank got about 100 gallons in it. My birthday was on the 12th, and a bunch of you guys sent in gifts, 
and I was able to make it out to the post office and I picked up this new sombrero that Mike sent in and as soon as I get the rest of the gifts uh, I'll showcase them on a video and show you guys what I got. I scored this washer and dryer and when I got it home I I checked it I think that's on the video and I'm pretty sure just the pump is bad on the washer so I ordered a new pump and I'll be able to do my laundry here. The Sun Gold Power 6048 hybrid inverter controller I have in the shop can easily run these especially in in the middle of the day when it's really sunny. In fact that system would run without any batteries connected <clears throat> so when it's sunny I can run this system without any expense or cost to my solar system. The way I'll have it hooked up uh, there's just a short hose that runs from the back of the washer. For now, it just goes right into the gray water from the shower. I only use natural soaps, and and I'm not like filthy when I shower, and so I think that it'll work nicely just to use the gray water from the shower to do my laundry. I can easily change my mind, though, and pull water from the rain harvesting system. And then I have a I have a drain here, but it's slow because... Uh, I need to connect a better system on this side to a uh, drain, you know. And so for now, I have that tubing that can run from the drain on the washer all the way over to the swell for my gray water system. So the gray water will just go in there and water the corn and whatnot. By draining the system all the time, I shouldn't have to worry about it freezing. I could insulate the lines as well. And as you can see, it's right next to the chimney. It wouldn't be difficult at all to get some more pallets and and make a wall right here and do a little roof with a you know with a, a rain harvesting roof on the side there uh, and a door. I could I could kind of insulate it and then if it's going to be really cold, I can run the chimney and that would heat the area up. You know, but I really don't think it'll be a problem because just like my my shower system here, I just make sure that I crack the drain and allow the water to drain out and it's never frozen. If you want to learn more about my homestead, go over to my website. You can check out my books and the products that I make. I'm also partnered with Discount Lots and we're giving away a 1.32 acre lot of land for free here in Arizona. Just go over to the website and you can see where to enter to win. Of course, if you'd rather browse and find yourself a piece of land to buy for as little as 200 bucks a month, you can check out my link for that. And there's a discount code for 10% off your land, which is a big, big savings. And finally, if you're interested in a larger lot, I have access to a 44 acre lot. Just send me an email if you want the details, but only if you're serious. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Leave a comment below if you got any questions and I will catch you on my next video.